Hi, this is Greg Nillis, and you are watching the one and only world-renowned, amazing Gregory Mantel Show. with Rip Hillis from 80's $100 Makeover. He was also on Extreme Makeover Home Edition. Great to meet you, Rib. Pleasure. Actually, I should say good to see you again because I actually met you yesterday. That's the right. The photo we, shoot you were doing. We had a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a yeah. publicity photo shoot um, shot with Noel DeGanti um, and it went uh, went very well. Very well. But where, where's the uh, the tool belt and the <laughs> hammer and the saw? And I, the, I leave those things on set. Although, yes, we did have uh, we did kind of a, a cute hunky handyman uh, picture. But um, I try not to do too much labor when I'm not on set working because I end up oh. working quite a lot between... You so know, you play a handyman on TV but not in real I life. Play, yes, I actually I played a doctor once. Let's see, I played a dead guy once. But yeah, I played a dead a guy. Was I that played. fun playing the dead guy? It was surprisingly hard. You have to be really still. It was on CSI. Uh, I did CSI Miami and CSI, the, the regular CSI, I guess Vegas. And in both... I, I died because you know. Then they have the flashbacks of how oh. they forensically find out how this guy right. died. Because if I you're had, alive, they can't solve the crime. So I had I mean, so yeah. much prosthe prosthetics, prosthesis, prosthetic makeup. All my entire body was covered to look as if I had decomposed over yeah. like a, a couple of weeks. So what, what, what happened to you? How they kill you off? Do you know? Like they I died by shooting um, steroids and I had some sort of reaction to it and I died and I'm laying on the floor and then I was just in this, it was gross yeah. and I, you couldn't recognize, I met everyone on the cast, everyone in makeup, they wouldn't recognize me, I laid on the floor for like six <laughs> hours and they did a scene around me and I know who they are but they would literally not know who I am. Didn't recognize you without no, the decomposition. I like a dead guy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> it's probably a good thing that you were you yes. know, living here. Just, yeah. You know, but um, Kevin Costner started his whole career that way, the big chill. He was, was, he, he was the dead guy. That yeah. launched his movie career. I did so, not know that. Then dancing, dancing Being dead can lead to great things sometimes. Well, yeah. Unfortunately, on $100 Makeover, I don't get to be dead. I have to be very active and lively and work uh, and build stuff all day. But that's what I was saying. I try to leave my tool belt uh, at, on set because otherwise I'd be working all the time. Although you'd be surprised how many people... It'd be like being an accountant and having everyone go, Hey, can you come do my taxes? Everyone oh, so now people to, are hitting you up? They always want me to build stuff for them. Yeah. Well, actually, I've got a list here. I figured. I figured. <laughs> So what do I get for $100? What is this $100 makeover thing? What $100 you... makeover, I think, is an amazing, timely show, given the sort of the, you know, the financial situation mm -hmm. in the country. People don't have money to go just wasting on, you know, making over their homes. You can't, not, not like extreme makeover where you knock it down and rebuild it. So each room What is that, like the, the million dollar makeover? You know, if, if we put a price tag on what was done on those houses, it would be probably multi-million dollar wow. houses okay. in terms of all of the work and the material that goes into it and, and the land. I mean, it's amazing. But that's extreme. $100, it's on a budget. It's, uh, as I like to put it, it's inexpensive, but it's not Do they cheap. ever say, hey, I thought you were from that other show. Is that all I get? <laughs> yeah. Come back. Yeah. We, went with the, we went the extreme makeover. I they we keep going, what's the, uh... going on? I'm not, I'm with... <laughs> but no, we, um, a lot of what we do on our show is repurposing and reusing things. Um, mm -hmm. I'm the carpenter. We have a, uh, an interior designer, and we have um, an organizational specialist. And we go into the home, and we first get rid of a lot of the clutter. Uh, mm -hmm. Which is amazing. It makes a big difference when you get. Is that, that a stuff. big thing? You know, we were joking beforehand about hoarders, but is that a big thing? Do you come across a lot of hoarders oh, and man. clutterers? There's and some people that just have piles and piles of clothes, or like they don't get rid of old magazines, and it, it adds up. And over time, you know, it's also it's like it's like your body. It's like if you don't take inventory and stay in shape, you're going to wake up one day and be like, oh my god, I'm like 40 pounds overweight. If you don't do that with your home, you, you know, your house is going to get cluttered and overrun. So we come in, we clean house. I find something that I'm going to build. We keep it under $100. We use paint. We use some storage bin. But when the family comes back, it's, it's really amazing to see the difference between... Oh, so you send them away for a while? Is that... Uh... They go away just for, I think it's like 24 hours, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, on Extreme Makeover Home Edition, didn't you send them away for a while? They were right? gone for a week. Well, five days. They were gone for five days, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they'd go to... They usually went to Disneyland, which is really fun. Oh. Was that, a, was that a promo for Disney, <laughs> Disney like uh, ABC, we, we went to Disney? ABC oh, that's right. show, yeah, yeah. So, yes, they were always at Disney World. 
You can always tell them when the parades. Yeah, ABC I think for a hundred dollar makeover, we might if there's a carnival in town, we might send them to that. <laughs> yeah, we don't have quite that the one on the corner in Hollywood. That's yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, the Kitty Carnival. That, uh, exactly. Okay, but so can you give me an example though? I'm just curious. So seriously, you know, you know, Rachel Ray's got her thirty dollar meals or whatever she does, you know, lunches, dinners. But so what? Are, you know, what do you? Can you just give me a specific example of something maybe you've done uh, for a hundred bucks? One of the things that I did, we made over. Um, it was a, a guy he had a guest bedroom, and he he's a he works with blueprints, mm-hmm. um, and so he has a, he needed a drafting table. We didn't have one, so I found doors in his garage that they used to have in the house that they were just literally laying around, and I used the door. I put a I sanded it down, put a nice coat of black paint, and then the hole where the doorknob would go was where I, the cables would go through. We put a computer on the door, found some great lumber in the garage, and I sanded down, bought some really cool, heavy hardware to, to hold the legs together and build the frame, and I think the hardware was like 15 bucks, hmm. and um, I basically, we built that door for probably under $20, the desk, wow. and when he came in, it was amazing, because it worked perfectly. The blueprints fit right on it, and that was something that... You know, you just got to have a new, a, a new vision, a new eye, and then you know, don't be afraid to do a little bit of labor because that's the thing. We're not, gonna, we're not counting the cost of labor. If you're oh, willing to yeah. do it yourself, you can do amazing. You, you, things. It would cost a little bit more to have you come over and do it. It's gonna cost thousands and thousands <laughs> yeah. of dollars just by face, just Call by, agent, just by face you know? feed. If yeah. I show yeah. up, I knock on your door. It's like, yeah, you gotta pay. For it. No, so it's a, it's a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun it's on A um, and E Saturday mornings. Now, uh, do you do a lot of this locally here in L.A., out of curiosity? We or? have been um, traveling all over the country. We were oh, okay. in Seattle. Um, the production company is based in Seattle. Oh. And so we've done, uh, I think, four or five, four or six shows in Seattle. We went to uh, Long Island, which is a lot of fun, mm. back east. I'm from Boston, so that was cool. Uh, San Diego and in Texas. So we're going we're gonna to spread it around. We're going to be all over the country. Because also on Ex- Extreme Makeover, the right, that was everywhere. Extreme Makeover hit every state in the union. Uh, I joined in season, I think it was season five, and they were just finishing up getting every state. And so we would, they did, you know, um, Hawaii and Alaska at some point. But um, yeah, Extreme Makeover is all over the place. But there was actually what, a kind of a philanthropic side of that, because I saw a clip on YouTube where you, I think you were in Kansas building a tornado shelter for the one town that had been hit or yeah. somewhere in the Midwest building a. Exactly. That was in Chapman, Kansas, and they got devastated devastated by a tornado and so not only did we help rebuild one individual family's home but we also built a, a tornado shelter exactly right in the wow. center of town so if another tornado came through town there would be a place that they could go to be safe but it also was it became like a rec center um, no it was amazing I really really enjoyed the time I spent on Extreme Makeover the philanthropic aspect of it it got me into charity work I started working with the Red Cross I started working mm-hmm. with um, uh, they're called Be the Match, but it used to be called the National Marrow Donor Program, which is where you go to get a bone marrow transplant. And really? It just, so you're. Uh, I am on the registry of to get a bone. Uh, if someone, if I were a match for someone, really? they would call me and say, "Can you come donate bone marrow?" And I would wow. do that. So that. That's pretty intense, though, isn't it? I mean, what, what's the technology? Um, Be the Match. They they work on you know research and work on you know family support and they work on helping the patients. But the research is really amazing because it used to be pretty intense. Yes, you would you would get bone marrow taking out of your hip bone typically, mm-hmm. and that it was uncomfortable uh, to say the least. I mean, it wasn't devastating, but you're saving someone's life. Now the technology they can do it literally with a blood transfusion, uh, or they take a needle in one arm, a needle in the other. The blood goes through. They take out what they need, essentially plasma. I think uh, I'm not a doctor. I played one on TV, but. <laughs> I'm not a doctor. <laughs> and a dead guy. I, I, and a carpenter. Exactly. But they just, um, they take that stuff they need out of the blood and it goes right back in and it takes a few hours, but you, are, you literally walk in, you walk out. So the technology is amazing and it's it's saving people's lives. Hey, I want credit for this idea, but you could do a reality show about that, like yeah. for organ transplant or bone marrow transplant. I, makes sound heavy, but think of all the, the real life to, drama. I, one of the things that I miss about Extreme Makeover uh, and what they what, what we did over there and what they still do is the, the charitable side of it and really highlighting people in need um, because there are there's no end to how many people out there need need help not everyone needs a new house so we'll be right back think you can't get a makeover with some old junk and a hundred bucks we've only got a hundred dollars to use for each room these three designers will prove you wrong annie presents whoa this looks so freaking cool an all new series we're miracle workers And we are back with Rib Hillis from 
hundred dollar makeover. Hundred dollar makeover. A and E. I used to be on Extreme Makeover. Yes, on A and E. I'm currently on an A and E show. Yeah. All right. So how did you? fall into this because you were the soap star from Port that Charles. That is a good, my career trajectory has just been, um, I'm thrilled to have it, but it's been kind of, I don't know what, where, you know, where, how I got here or where it's going next. Because I, I did, I started off, um, I came to Los Angeles to be an actor. I got very fortunate, worked on a soap opera right away, Port Charles, which is a general hospital spinoff. Sure. Um, was, uh, got killed. On, uh, at the nurse's ball. Hey, General I'm Hospital. noticing a pattern here. You were killed on CSI. I, you know and killed on. Maybe I'm that guy. I'm the dead <laughs> the guy. The guy who gets. Yeah, yeah. But uh, over the years, you know, I was very fortunate. I, could, I was able to continue to work and continue to do acting work. I've also modeled. I did modeling since straight out of college. <laughs> but when you're not working as an actor and you're not modeling, you got to do something to support your family. <laughs> uh, and I had a new young. Uh, you know, new family, so I had a handyman business. Now, well, since you, you mind, you have two kids. I do. I have their seven-year-olds now. I have twins. Um, and back when they were very first born, I, you know, I, I needed to do something to support them. So I had a handyman business, and I've been working with my hands. Oh, my so you life. actually did do this? I did. I truly oh, okay. had a handyman. So it's not. That, it is legit. When I was a kid, my dad built stuff around the house. I would always help him do things. I had a little hammer and you know tool set. Mm -hmm. And then in college, I did framing um, for a summer in demolition construction. Came back from Europe, you know, was living in Los Angeles, and yeah, the handyman business, and it was going so well that I actually had to stop because it was taking time away from auditions. Wow. And I, you know, I wanted to be on camera. I wanted to pursue my career on camera. So I, I put the handyman business aside, but it, it ended up coming back to help me because when Extreme Makeover, when I got on that, it was kind of, it combined the two things that, I, that I've been doing. One, working with my hands, and two, working on, on camera. You know, who else was a carpenter? Um, Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford. See, I think Jesus. So playing the too. dead body was Kevin Costner, and being the, the handyman was or carpenter was you know, Harrison Ford. So see, that's, this is I a good have, career all If here. I could have a little a little piece of their careers, there that would be fantastic. Yeah. And you, well, and you just did a, a sci-fi movie. I did. I did. A, uh, I still get to act, which is wonderful. Um, I, I have many different hats that I put on. So on any given day, I'm either a, a, a host, a, a carpenter, an actor, a model. But yeah, I did um, Dino Croc versus Super Gator. It's okay to I love the okay title. To it's okay to laugh because I. <laughs> Dino Croc versus Super Gator. It, it was a, a Roger Corman film. Um, then they did all these other sci-fi. They did Dino Croc, then they did Super Gator. And I, so Dino Croc, Super Gator, and I played a character called the Cajun. The Cajun? The Cajun, who is a... As uh, in like New Orleans, down I, southern You know what? Cajun. There wasn't a lot of backstory that they gave me, but yes, I think I'm from the Louisiana Bayou, and I, mm -hmm. and I, uh, kill, I kill things is what, what kill the character things. So <laughs> they hired, they brought me in to kill the Dino Croc and the Super Gator. Were they trying to kill each other or not? Was it like was a the Godzilla plan. versus... Exactly. King Kong versus Godzilla. Yeah, yeah. Godzilla versus Mega Godzilla. Did you watch those creature double features as a kid growing up? I used to love those. Uh, that was the most fun. Uh, it, turning the channels, I think, you know, so. I saw. Could you imagine being the guy in the suit? This is running around <laughs> the giant suit. Is that how they did? Yeah, I don't know. No, Some of them were kind of looked about that level. Where now it's all was like the guy computer and generated, and it was really amazing, the special effects. And the, the crocodile and the gator were, you know, the size of a house. It was amazing. It was a lot of fun. We shot it in Hawaii, which didn't oh, suck. Oh, well, yeah, that's a good sounded trip. better already. Um, and that was a blast. So, you know, who knows? So it ate Honolulu. I ate a lot of people, <laughs> but I lived. Oh, you, oh, you lived this yeah. time. Well, that's a, yeah. Maybe the Cajun now, will get to go have a, his own, maybe the Cajun goes to New York or something, you know, we'll have a spin-off. But that had David Carradine in it? Yes, David Carradine. I, it, to my knowledge, it was the last film that he finished. Uh, mm -hmm. he, would, he shot our scenes, and then he flew off to uh, wherever it was that he unfortunately Thailand, died. Think, right? yeah. And he, he died while we were still filming. I remember mm -hmm. coming down to set. And I heard somebody say, I'm like, really? And he had, everyone I worked with had worked with him. I did not do scenes with him, so I'd, I hadn't gotten a chance to meet him. Mm. But, you know, like the cameraman and the other actors and the director and the producers, it was a, it was a bizarre, to say the least, a very bizarre and sad day. Yeah, sure. It was wild. Yeah. I, he did a great job in the movie, too. I mean, it's a, it's a fun, schlocky kind of, you know, B sci fi movie. You know, when it's, not, it's not more than it is, but he was really great, and it's just, it's too bad. 
So it, well, you, you mentioned kind of the multifaceted career that you've had with the modeling and the acting and the hosting. But I, I guess I'm just curious, um, is there one side that you and I want, prefer? I want, I want your job. I want to be an interviewer. You, I think, you that, would be, interview? I okay. think that would be super uh, You want to ask me a question? I actually, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't approve this with my publicist, so I don't know if I'm going to let you, <laughs> you ask me questions. Do you have a publicist? <laughs> <laughs> That's my story, and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> I got the chance actually to do some interviewing. I worked for Dick Clark Productions, and we oh. did Rocking New Year's Eve. Um, in uh, and I got to YouTube. I saw you interview Justin I Bieber. I got to interview Justin Bieber, you Selena really Gomez, uh, the Black Eyed Peas, uh, David Guetta, and it was it was awesome. It was so much fun. You know, I'm a music fan, but it was just it was so cool to be there and be around these people that are so talented, amazing, and. That now, I, I only saw a second of it. So what did you ask Justin Bieber, or what was he like? What Justin Bieber had a broken leg when he walked in. A broken so leg? I, he had a cast on. So and I he said, that's him. okay, I played a doctor on TV, I know what to do. I think I did say something along those lines. See, I don't remember. See, I know you. You're good. You're good. That's okay. But I, you know, I can read was, people. You know, what did I saw. ask him? Um, I think I asked him how he busted up his leg, what his plans were for 2010, because it was coming into the new year. Um, Finish high school? Is he even in high school yet? I'm mean, oh, like or 14 Dallas. or something. Yeah. Selena Gomez, that's an amazing young woman. She is so incredible, so talented. She was so present in an interview and personable and respectful. Really. I should know. No, I, I'm thinking of the other Selena, but who's, I, know, I should know. I should know though. You're thinking of Selena, the, yeah, the singer. singer. Well, she, I think, I believe she was named for her. Oh, really? Um, oh. Yeah, the movie uh, Jennifer Lopez played in that movie. Hmm. But yeah, it was just it was a really great, fun experience. I would love to do more of that. Hmm. Um, I, I learned a long time ago to not to not say no to work, especially in this town. You know, you live in Hollywood. If you want to have some longevity, you got to have um, some uh, you know diversity. So I, I can, well, they always say that you know the actor, writer, producer, director yeah. type is you know, what you know. You remember in um, Zoolander when they did the the slash award, and it was I think it was Fabio got the model slash actor or whatever oh. you know, and they and they made fun because that's it's sort of cliche the model slash actor. But you know what? I have had an amazing, fortunate career as a model. I started doing that in 1992, um, straight out of college. I lived in Paris for two years. I've traveled all wow. over the world. Not had bad. amazing experience. Just got to work on America's Next Top Model. And I've also been able to transition into acting and now hosting. And I'm not going to limit myself as, you know, I, I got kids. I got to feed them. So I'll do whatever I have to do. And I'll pound nails. I'll go put, put my tool belt on and work if I have to. All right. We'll be right back. We are back with rib pillows for a $100 makeover at Extreme Makeover Home Edition. But as I say, it's interesting because you've done, you know, so many everything. different... <laughs> everything. You name it. I haven't sold um, star maps on, on Hollywood Boulevard yet, though. That could be, you know, that's one thing I haven't done yet. Well, if that could be plan B. If, if, if the other stuff kind of fizzles you know out. Then, uh, if you don't use your backup plan, you played it too safe. I think that's mm -hmm. from the Dos Equis ad. Um, yeah, so that's what uh, you got to just, you have to be able to, you know, take risks. Well, and so was that, because it is a bit of a risk to go into acting number one or modeling, so I guess you're the type of person who was willing to... I, I guess I am a very impulsive, risk-taking person. You know, I, um, I transferred to University of Colorado sight unseen. I had not been there. Mm. And I transferred because I fell in love with this girl. And I just followed my passion. I'm a very, I guess I'm a very Was it a great romance? It was an amazing romance. We met the summer before I was to go to college. Um, she went to Colorado. I went to Lehigh University in Pennsylvania and I played football there. I spent six months there. I played football mm. and I transferred and I'd never been. Uh, unfortunately, she and I broke up after about two weeks after I, I was going to say, because if you told me you broke up as soon as you transferred, that would be a I was sad story. Broken, it was yeah. devastating. But I stayed for four years. It was the best decision I ever made in my life for the worst reason. Mm -hmm. You don't transfer to a new school for some a girl that you, you just met. But then, you know, everything I've done, I got on a plane and went to Milan. You won't be on a Bachelorette after that one. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> the dating shows just rolled you out. After. Yeah, I will. I mean, I, I, I keep doing it though. I um, my my kid's mother um, and I we got married in four days. Four days we met and we're married in four days. So I guess I have a track record of being very impulsive and very passionate. But you know, for me, it's it's sort of a double-edged sword because it's been. You know, of course, there's the downsides, there's the negatives, but there's it's just given me such a full, rich life of exciting things that I've done, and I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep pushing it. Well, and one thing, the reason I was mentioning about the career as far as soaps and the hosting, though, 
you know, daytime is kind of falling on a hard time at the moment as, as far as a lot of the soaps have been, you know, getting yeah. canceled left and right. Yeah. And then a lot of it's the reality shows they tend to be going to. So you're kind of killing off your former bread and butter. <laughs> yeah. well, you know, <laughs> but what do you think about that? Is that years uh, ago, I believe it was the writer's strike, uh, I don't know, maybe eight years ago now, and there was nothing. There was no work going on because there was a strike. And all these reality shows came up. And I think as an actor back then, I was like, they're not going to last. They're not going to well, they're still there. Mm. And I, when reality, when I got asked to join reality world, basically, I was like, I'm an actor. I don't want to do it. I'm so glad I did because, you know, one, I, I need to make a living. And two, you know, especially the shows that I work on, I'm very happy to do what I do and help people. Extreme Makeover, $100 Makeover, these I think are very good shows. Um, if, you, if you're just an actor in this town, you're out of work a lot, a lot more than you're in work. So... Um, you know, and what I just started a new thing. Um, I'm a comic. I'm a stand up comic. That's right, action I theater. I, I don't think I could be called a stand up comic. I don't even know if I'm funny. People, if people are laughing at you. You told me your publicist you're not, thinks you're funny. <laughs> my publicist <laughs> thinks I'm funny, my girlfriend thinks I'm funny, and I get this false sense of humor, meaning I get this sense that I'm funny. And <laughs> so I, I put that to the test when I did um, Acme. Did you get uh, laughs? Did, did the audience laugh? You know what? It was an amazing experience, and yes, they did laugh. Okay, so well. it, was, it, was, it was basically like hosting Saturday Night Live, so I, I've mm -hmm. got some practice for when I do that in the future. And also... Now, was this, this was improv, or it was... I, I did, too. I did a sketch comedy show, which is Acme Saturday Night, mm -hmm. and then also I did a, um, an improv show, which is terrifying. Imagine mm -hmm. there's no script. I mean, kind of like us sitting here... I mean, this isn't. But in many ways, you are pants. very probably very good at improv because you listen and you you know you have to respond. But the, then you want to try and you, in the back of your mind, you're like, I have to be funny. I have to be funny. I have to be funny. And if you try to be funny, you're usually not. That's funny. why I think it would be hard to be a stand-up comic, though, because oh. to go out there night after night or feel like you say, you know, that you have to be funny. Because this kind of a thing, what I like, is it's a little more relaxed. You know, you, sometimes, hopefully, you're funny. Sometimes you're not, whatever. Right. You know, you're just talking. There's no but, for, but for a comic, you've got to be like a laugh and a minute, you know? <laughs> you know when you're not funny because it's silent. Yeah, people are so, a room full of oh, people staring at I you. I mean, I'm getting chills just thinking about that. But... And those those guys, those men and women that do that, it must be it must be the highest high in the world to be up there and nail it and know like you you did it you got you got people to laugh just you and a microphone and maybe some props I don't know. <laughs> Well, I think after the photo shoot yesterday too, which we'll take a look at as we go on here, that uh, I think you got the comedian in you. I try not to take myself too seriously. There was a time in my life where. Um, I think I may have taken myself to. I think everyone does, but I, you know, I'm, uh, I'm gonna be 40 this year, and oh. um, I got kids that I adore, and they keep me pretty grounded. My, some, my best friends are the kids I grew up with. I say kids because you know, like we grew up together, but you know, we're all they're from Boston, and they, it just keeps me grounded in who I am. And in a town like this, in the, in the, in the, in the industry, Hollywood, you don't always think necessarily well, well you know, grounded. You can get, you can get uh, lost, and then you wake up one day and you're like, "Who am I? What am I doing here?" So I just, you know, I think I've found a good balance in my life. Um, a good friend of mine, so he he's a photographer, and he shot he shot Brad Pitt, and he was shooting mm -hmm. him, and Brad had just turned forty at this time, and Brad was saying how amazing it was to be 40 how everything made sense now mm -hmm. and my friend Tony told me this and I remember thinking that and that, and that was a few years ago when he told me and I gotta say I think I understand what he meant in that you, you really get a sense of of peace in your life at least I feel that now we'll see <laughs> we'll see if something comes up when you turn 50 <laughs> well you can always do a reality show about turning 50 sure you know that's uh, you can do a reality show about anything I know you know that's the thing there used to be things you could do TV shows about and not but these days you can come up with almost any concept yeah especially with cable that's right yeah yeah and yeah, uh, lumberjacks. I forget there are all these, but I did want to mention along that line that you were on America's Top Model, which is certainly one of the bigger reality I shows. I was on America's Next Top Model. It was a lot of fun. I got brought in as the each. They have, a, I guess, a test or a challenge. I remember one. They had to they had to sprint up like five flights of stairs and then jump into a, a modeling shoot. Well, this one they had to do a, a modeling shoot with a male model, me. In lingerie. I, I was not in lingerie. They were in lingerie. Oh, okay. I was going to say. I that, yeah. that would That's be, not a, that would have been a job. Or, That would be a different show. But no, it was, a, it was a, a not the worst day of work I ever had. I had to do a pillow fight with, I think it was about 10 or 12 girls that day in, in lingerie. So I remember, <laughs> I remember calling my buddy back at home, my best friend's Muggsy, and I'm like, dude, you are not going to believe what I'm doing today. He's like, shut up. You dog, oh, man, I hate you. Yeah, it's a fun... 
But that episode happened. was kind of intense. You said was that the one where Tyra was the, the the tagline they have for that show is the girl that drove Tyra over the edge. And that mm. was the end of that show, and it ended up making it on a lot of like you know in the media and press because Tyra kind of lost it. Uh, was mm. really her buttons got pushed by this particular girl. So um, I was not there when that happened. Oh, but, it was, um, but yes, you always can catch the girl that pushed Ty- pushed Tyra over the edge, and you can see pictures of me in, in a pillow fight. <laughs> Probably on YouTube, I'm sure. I got so many feathers up my nose and in my lungs. And did you see the, the, the hazards of a pillow fight? Did you fight? see recently even... that some guy swallowed a pee? He breathed a pee in. It went into his lungs, and then he thought he had a tumor and he was coughing. And he went to the doctors and they X-rayed. He had a pee growing in his lungs. A pee <laughs> growing in his like a plant. This is true. Well, that's gonna haunt me all day for some yes, reason. I don't know gonna... why. I, this is. <laughs> Be well, careful. I learned. No, I never. I Chew your food. I guess I don't know. That, a isn't that pee crazy? growing inside yes. of him. Now yeah. you're concerned. You know they say that like the average person when you're asleep at night, like spiders or something, crawl. Or you swallow a spider. And they're not afraid of spiders. You used to be afraid of spiders, and then um, I some I heard somewhere that that most spiders are female spiders because the females eat the males, and so I just said, you know what, spiders are just they're just girls, and I like girls, so. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, that could also be a reality show. I think. Uh, and um, in our final minute here, though, I do want to mention that besides everything else you mentioned, you're actually obviously big into fitness, um, and we are, I think our audience has always been in tune with the fitness shows that we've done. Um, are you a fitness nut, or how do you stay in shape? I, I, like, I look at my fitness regimen as a lifestyle. I think it's a much easier way to look at it. I've never, I don't own a scale. I don't get on a scale. I don't even go to the gym, but what I do over the you course... You don't go to the gym? I don't go to the gym, wow. but over the course of a year... I will stay active and healthy and do things. There might be days, there might be weeks where I'm busy and I can't really get into a regimen. But I think for me personally, it's better to think of it over the long haul. Like, I'll always, I'll play with my kids a lot. I go swimming, my kids swim, I jump in the pool and swim with them. You know, if I'm at a hotel when we're shooting uh, the TV show and they have a gym, I'll work out. I'm always doing Well, you got something. the hammer, the saw, the... Just working on set time yeah. work. But for me, if I, if I get too focused on, oh, I gotta go to the gym, I gotta go to the gym every day, and then it, you know, you can you can fall into a routine of doing it, but you also can fall out of that routine. And mm-hmm. that, to me, it's more about consistency. I try and eat healthy. I don't count calories. I count chemicals. You know, oh. if I can't pronounce what I'm eating, I'm not going to eat it. I think our bodies are not meant to process preservatives and all those things. I can process. Fat so are you vegan sugar. or organic? No, no, no I eat stuff? meat. I I mm-hmm. try and eat um, meat that's not treated with hormones. I basically, I, I think we should live like people lived, you know, two, three hundred, a thousand years ago. You know, in that kind of a simple um, diet and a simple, you know, just stay active. You don't don't drive your car to the store if it's only a block away. You should walk. That that to me, that's my lifestyle. I totally respect people that are professional athletes, professional bodybuilders. But for me, it's not. That's not what I'm trying to accomplish. I just try and stay healthy and don't get hurt. Don't get that's hurt. I key, like that, key, key, key. especially when you're. The handyman on Annie's hundred dollar yeah. makeover. Thank you very much, Rib Hillis. Thank you. Look for you on Saturdays on Hundred Dollar Makeover. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you next time.